Hey everybody, and especially new viewers, so you've probably read the article about me and finding an alien signature in the Daily Mirror, written by senior technological and science journalist Michael Moran. It's a great article. I spoke in depth to the journalist, uh, but it's very short and it praises the whole story. So if you haven't watched my previous films about finding an alien technological signature, I'll summarize it today and bust a few myths so you actually understand what they've actually found and what's really going on. So I'm a science filmmaker. I've worked for BBC Specialist Factual Department, History and Science Programmes, Tomorrow's World, Horizon. I've worked for PBS, WGBH in Boston, making Nova Films, Discovery Channel, National Geographic, mainly about science and history. I'm not a multiple PhD scientist. I make films with PhD scientists. But actually, I did teach at a large British university to undergraduates at a degree level course. I was teaching broadcast media skills as a senior staff member. At the time, the students just called me Simon, I guess. I was hired as a lecturer at this university. But it appears that a few annoying British people have a misunderstanding about the term professor. They assume that a professor is only a professor of science. Well, that's not true. You can be a professor of medieval English literature or baking. It's an honorary term given to people who profess, mainly at colleges of higher education and universities. And you can be a professor of anything. So when starting this humble YouTube channel, French friends saw my wild hair and me professing about science from my media knowledge and said, why don't you call yourself Professor Simon? I mean, that was just a nickname. Maybe I always was. It's up to you to decide. But haters will be haters, really. Get over it. Much more importantly than my educational background with an honours degree is that we found a technological signature from an extraterrestrial intelligence. So I'm told I didn't do the research. So let me go over today how I heard about it and then the research I've done and the people in the top places I've spoken to that pretty well confirm that it's true, but with issues. So initially what happened, because I run this little YouTube channel, somebody emailed me who turned out to be very important. He's a senior administrator in EU radio astronomy. And he wanted to tell me the story. It seems that there's a bit of a schism between America, North America, and Europe over the SETI type of research. SETI is not just American, North American organization, it's global. And it seems that astrophysicists here in Europe, with access to radio telescopes, had a bit of an issue with the North American operation. So they went it alone. A researcher in a department of mathematics in a large Italian university reparsed, that means looked at, all the SETI at home data. That was a screensaver that was put out by Berkeley in California for you and I to actually assess if there was a technological signature from the vast amount of data that SETI was finding, that they couldn't process, so they use your home PC to actually look and see if there was anything which was unusual. And the parameters of a technological signature is it's a single point source, it's a narrow beam, and it isn't just a natural buzz of the universe. It's something technological. And the amazing piece of new information that this EU radio telescope administrator shared with me is that by parsing the SETI at home data, five very likely candidates were found. These were unusual signatures that might, we didn't know at the time, be a technological signature of a non-human intelligence, an actual buzz from a planet somewhere in our galaxy that was obviously using technology. And looking that way, for an alien technological signature was a giant schism from what SETI in the US were doing. They were looking for a giant, hello, we're out there, where Europe was thinking maybe an alien technological race wouldn't be saying hello, but would have the distinctive buzz of their technology, which we might be able to pick up. And these five candidates, and that's what they're called, candidates, needed to be looked at more. So here in Europe, we fund big science 
projects and all science through a program called Horizon, everything from biology to astrophysics. And they started spending a lot of money on building new, better radio telescopes because they wanted to discover the secrets of the five candidates. And then along came this new organisation, Breakthrough Listen based in Oxford, but a global organisation that suddenly had a hundred million dollars of telescope time that they could buy, I think, because they wanted more details of the five candidates. Breakthrough Listen could now buy hours of telescope time at Green Bank, at Parks, and at the new Square Kilometre Array in Australia. And what did they do? They focused on the five candidates, calling them BL, Breakthrough Listen, C, Candidate 1, BLC 2, 3, 4, and 5. BLC 1, Breakthrough Listen, Candidate 1, had very positive but very very weak results. What they found using the Parks steerable dish in Australia was this. First of all, this possible technological buzz from a planet was a single point source. If you steered the dish away, it went away, it appeared, it goes away. It's coming from one specific point, right? That's a good clue. The second thing, the signal was narrow band rather than the big buzz of hydrogen and other things that make sounds in the radio telescope spectrum, this was a small electromagnetic frequency. The kind of frequencies that we would use here on Earth for radio broadcasts, radar, microwaves, that kind of thing. It's an indication that it's not just a natural source. It's a single point source and it's a narrow beam. But then there's a third clue that people don't understand, so let me explain it. So Parks is a steerable dish. And as the Earth turns, Parks has to compensate for the Earth turning to keep the single point source in its focus. So ooh, as the single point source transited our night sky in Australia, roughly the maximum time it could track the single point source by using the steerable dish was about two hours. But in those two hours, they found the third and I think the most significant clue. So it appears to be coming from a planet orbiting a distant star. It appears to be narrowband, but the third clue is it had something called Doppler shift. And that means over the two hours of tracking it, the signal either increased or decreased in frequency. That means that the planet it's coming from is rotating. Pretty well confirming that the signal was coming from a planet orbiting a distant star rather than a piece of local human interference because over the time of the observation the signal's frequency was shifted that wouldn't come from a piece of human interference in my humble opinion and the problem is the aliens weren't saying hi we're here the aliens were just buzzing, if that's what they're doing, with their normal life. They were tuned into the radio or whatever they're doing with an electromagnetic spectrum. It isn't very strong. The signal which is still there, which is detected, and further research has now gone on, is a LIS signal, low information zone. It is so low that it could be cell phone interference from Australia. It could be an Elon Musk annoying satellite. It could be human. So Breakthrough Listen as yet are very rightly reluctant to publish that they have found evidence of an extraterrestrial technological signature. They are still looking at it. So I contacted the principal investigator Dr. Andrew Simeon from Berkeley, who runs Breakthrough Listen Science Program. Dr. Simeon, I asked, BLC1, Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1, is it a technological signature? And he gave me this totally unambiguous answer. He said, Simon, maybe. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah. But when pushing him further on what they found, he said, well, we're still very much looking at it. 
when and if we get enough data to confirm what this single point source on a planet rotating in the narrowband electromagnetic frequency really is, we'll publish it. And that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. No, it really is the story. They have found a signal. The signal is Liz, low information zone. They haven't yet confirmed that it is really a technological signature. When they do, who knows when, Breakthrough Listen will be the people to tell our planet they found evidence of an alien technological signature. But hang on, the Chinese with their FAST telescope might do it first. The truth is out there.